it's Julie. Welcome back to Rowan Co. Farms. So today's video starts off with a tiny little road trip to a neighboring farm. So obviously I have permission to be out here. These are my neighbors. They have told me that I can come anytime and pick whatever I want. Um, I have not been out here to pick yet this year, so it's exciting. I get to come out. Um, I'm gonna pick some of these lovely greens today and then we're gonna go back to the house and we're gonna make collard kraut. So if you've never had collard kraut, this is gonna be an exciting recipe and I'm gonna encourage you guys to try it out. So let's do it. And look at these monstrous greens. They're huge and there are thousands of them. They go all the way back there. So obviously we're not gonna need very many. We're gonna take from just a few of these plants here. Um, yeah, these look amazing. Look how great uh, these collars look. I've got a knife and a basket. And what I'm gonna do is just, you just come in and you just kind of cut, cut the leaves off like that. So you get big leaves. trying to leave and I'm stuck in the mud. I've tried my four-wheel drive and I'm just really tearing up this field and so I called Greg and he's gonna come help me. Um, I feel really stupid. I don't know why I pulled down here like this. I just feel really stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get out and show you guys what I've done. Our big basket of greens here. I'm gonna get those washed up really good and I'm going to um, strip them off of the stems because the stems are pretty tough and I don't really care for that. So um, we're gonna get those all stripped off and then we will chop our greens up. You, you just have to chop it up in the, the size pieces that you like. I prefer kind of thin strips and so I'm gonna try to do um, as thin a strips as I can get out of these collard greens. Okay, so I've washed up all of the greens. We've stripped off the big thick stems. And now I just need to chop this up into some small pieces. But while we do that, let's talk about why would we want to make collard kraut. So traditionally, you know, you cook down collard greens until they're really soft. And then you usually add some type of vinegary pepper sauce or some Tabasco sauce or something spicy to it. So the idea here is that instead of us adding this spicy vinegary sauce to it later, we're going to ferment that into our kraut, okay? So the collard greens, hopefully when they're done, will be spicy and have that little bit of vinegary taste to them and will also be nice and tender as well. So I have never done this recipe before and I actually don't have a specific recipe. I'm just following some general, general fermentation guidelines and then I'm just gonna add some additional spices that I think will taste good. So I originally um, found out about collard kraut from a friend of mine, um, her name is Sharon and she has a channel called Southern Bella Home and she has a video where she makes her mother's collard kraut recipe. And so I have fashioned it after that one and um, am kind of making up my own and making it a little bit more spicy, adding a little garlic um, and a couple other things to it to add uh, some flavor. So let's finish chopping up all of our, our veg here and then I will show you how we're going to proceed next. It's really super, super easy. Uh, we're going to be adding some salt, some jalapenos, and some fresh garlic cloves. And I think that's going to be enough, guys. I don't think we're going to need to add anything extra. 
Um, we're going to be using like a half gallon size mason jar as well as a fermentation weight and a uh, little fermentation uh, airlock. Um, if you don't have those things, that's okay. You don't need to have them. The main thing you need is a mason jar. So as long as you have a mason jar, some salt, and your vegetables, you will be able to ferment. So I was really excited that Anna invited me to be part of this collaboration again. Um, I participated last year as well, and it was really, really fun, and there were so many great channels that were involved, and I hope that you guys enjoy this year's version as well. So I know that Anna is going to be doing several giveaways throughout this month. Uh, I know she has, um, she does a live events on Monday night on her channel, and she will be giving away stuff on her live events. Um, and the main way that you need to enter into these um, uh, contests is to just leave a comment on the videos, all the videos throughout this month um, that have the little purple icon that says Fermented February 2023. Um, and just make sure you leave all kinds of wonderful comments and that will get you registered in for the drawings and all of the prizes that are gonna be given away. Uh, we have some wonderful sponsors. Uh, this time, I believe Haas Tools is sponsoring, which is amazing. Uh, they're going to be giving away some, some great items. So, yeah, be sure to um, stick around, follow the other channels, you know, see what fermentation is all about. And obviously, you know, stick around for the prizes because that's going to be really, really fun. So you can see my pieces are kind of thin, kind of like coleslaw. Um, some of them are a little thicker here and there, and I'm trying to just get in there and make sure I chop those down. Uh, that's just what I prefer, but obviously you can cut them into little small one-inch pieces or whatever, you know, feels like it's a good edible size for you. Okay, we've got all of our kraut chopped up. I would say this is the equivalent of about one large head of cabbage. So I'm going to treat my salt ratios like this is one full head of cabbage. So generally speaking, I would be using two to three tablespoons of salt here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the salt to our kraut. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two and a half tablespoons. Salt is a critical element of your ferment, so you don't want to skimp on the salt. Um, it may seem like it's a lot of salt, but that salt is what helps keep your bacteria and keep it from getting moldy, okay? So if you do not add that salt, you're going to lose the element that actually keeps this preserved. So don't be scared to add your salt in there. So now I'm just going to kind of massage this in a little bit. We want to get the salt distributed all the way through our kraut here all throughout our greens. This is going to help kind of draw some of the moisture out of the greens. Now collards don't have quite as much moisture as, as cabbage does, so we may have to add a little water to our brine later, but we're just going to kind of have to play around with it a little bit and see. So you can already see just by kind of massaging and squeezing this a little bit, it's already started to kind of break, um, break down the plant just a little, you know, not and so it's not quite so stiff. It's going to allow some of that moisture to come out, and that's just going to help with this whole process. All right, so we're just going to kind of let this rest for about 15 minutes, and we'll come back and check on it. All right, guys, so it's been 15 minutes. Actually, it's probably been more like 20 minutes or so, and we can definitely tell that our kraut has started to soften up a whole lot. It has released some moisture, but we're going to have to see if this is enough moisture for our kraut. So what we're going to need to finish the kraut off, I have a half-gallon size mason jar here. I also have a fermentation weight. Um, and then I also have, this is an airlock lid. It looks a little bit like a nipple for a baby bottle, uh, but it just has a kind of a one-way valve up here at the top to allow gases and air to escape, but nothing to get back in. Uh, I've also got my garlic and my jalapenos here, and I'm just gonna kind of add those in. 
And I actually do need to kind of smash my garlic a little bit, which obviously you can do however you want. Smash it with your hand, the back of the knife. You're just trying to release. Oh, oh no, I lost one. That one's out. Okay, we're just gonna add those in. And let's mix it up a little bit. And then we're gonna start packing this into our jar. Let me get my kraut pickle packer. Okay, so this is a pickle packer. Basically, you use this to kind of help mash things down into the jar. You can also use a wooden spoon uh, or any other utensil that will help you pack things into your jar. Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and just start adding this kraut into our jar little by little. We'll do a few handfuls at a time and then we'll take our packer and we will mash that down. The idea here is we want to create moisture and draw out moisture into our jar because we do need moisture for our uh, ferment to work. Uh, if there's not enough moisture, we will add some water at the end. We're just going to proceed to continue the same way. We're going to add a few handfuls and then we're going to pack it down. And eventually we'll have all of our, our kraut in the jar. I really hope this turns out. I'm really excited to try it. Um, a little twist on your traditional sauerkraut. Look at that. Look at that green liquid in there. We're actually going to keep that because we, we need it. Whoops, I spit. I spilled half of it. <laughs> Way to go, Julie. And I just realized that I failed to keep <laughs> one of my leaves. So normally I would keep a whole collared leaf and kind of cut it to the size of this jar and I would put it down in here over the top of my greens. Uh, that way it kind of helps keep all the little pieces down. But since I don't have that, I'm going to improvise. And what I usually do in this situation is I use um, a Ziploc bag and I just kind of uh, lay that over the top of it to kind of act as my, um, as, my, as my barrier there. Now, we don't have enough liquid in here. We definitely want the liquid to be above the contents of the jar um, because in order for fermentation to work, it has to be in an environment that does not have oxygen. And so anything below the liquid, obviously it does not have um, oxygen circulating around in there. And that's what we wanna have. So we're gonna top this off with just a little bit of water. I'm gonna be using some filtered water out of my water filter here. So I'm not adding much, just a little, just to get it where we want it. So everything above this line here, anything that's stuck inside the jar that's hanging out up there is going to be susceptible to mold. And we do not want anything to mold up here, okay? We wanna make sure we're keeping that environment healthy. So I'm just gonna wipe this out um, with a paper towel or you can use a cloth or whatever, whatever works, but you just wanna make sure there's nothing hanging out up there that's gonna contaminate the rest of your ferment. I think that's better. Looks like everything is gone. I'm gonna go ahead and put this bag back in. We'll put our weight in. And we just wanna kinda of get that smushed down. Okay, so we're gonna add our fermentation lid right here to the top. Screw that down. And we're gonna let this sit onto our counter at room temperature for a minimum of five days. Um, after five days, we will kind of start to taste test this and see if it's as sour as we want it to be. Um, we can continue to let this ferment for multiple weeks if we want to, but generally my sweet spot is about 10 days. Um, so we're gonna start checking back in guys in just a few days and I'll let you know how this is turning out and what kind of things we need to do to tweak the recipe. So. I hope this was informative for you guys and we'll check back in in just a couple of days.
Hey guys, welcome back. It's been about six days since we started our collard kraut ferment, and so let's take a look at it and see how it's been doing. All right, there is the kraut. It has been bubbling, not terribly much, but it has been bubbling a good bit um, over the last six days. You can still see there are bubbles kind of trapped in there, which is good. It has not put off too much liquid. It hasn't overflowed or anything. Sometimes that does happen. Um, but yeah, we're gonna open this up and let's take a taste and see what it's like. Um, it may still need a little more fermenting time, uh, but it may be ready. So there's only one way to find out and that is to taste test it. Okay, so our kraut, it smells very krauty. If you know, it's like any cabbage or collards, they have that distinct smell. It definitely smells like collards and I definitely smell the jalapenos and the garlic too. Mm. All right, let's get in here. Let me get a little cup just so I don't contaminate my jar here. Let's put a little bit into our cup. All right, guys, let's see how this tastes. Okay, I got a few opinions. One, it's excellent. <laughs> like, I really, really like the flavor. I added a little bit too much salt, I think. I'm not sure if I'll be able to dilute that out in any way. I just think I won't be able to eat a whole bunch at one time. Or it would just need to be in combination with some other foods. That would help dilute out a little bit of the salt. But the flavor is great. The texture is good. It probably needs a few more days just to get a little bit softer. But I really, really like the way this has turned out. Mm -hmm. So I am definitely going to give it at least three or four more days. And then I'm going to check again and see how it tastes. But highly recommend, guys. Um, it's not too spicy. I could definitely see making it a little bit spicier. But I wasn't too sure how it was going to turn out. And I didn't want to overkill it with spice and then not be able to eat it at all. So. Yeah, guys, this is a great way to preserve collard greens and to have a little bit different sauerkraut other than your typical, you know, cabbage sauerkraut that you're used to seeing. So I really recommend this. It's, it's excellent. I'm going to leave a link down below for the original recipe where I got this from, which, like I said before, is my friend uh, Sharon at Southern Bella Home. She gave me the idea to try this collard kraut. So I'm going to leave her recipe and her video link down below as well. But yeah, guys, check out collard kraut. Another easy kind of fermenting recipe for you to get started with. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, leave your comments down below. That's going to enter you in the drawing that Anna is going to be doing um, every week to give away all the different prizes as part of fermented February. So really excited to see who's winning. They already gave away some prizes last week and there's lots of good stuff to come. So stick around for that. Can't wait to see you guys next time here at Rowan Co. Farms.